Beneath the tranquil waters off the coast of Indonesia lies one of the most fearsome geological ticking time bombs on Earth, the Sunda Megathrust. At first glance, the turquoise seas of the Indian Ocean give no hint of the raw, pent-up energy lurking below. But history tells a different story. In 2004, this hidden fault ruptured with apocalyptic force, triggering a magnitude 9.1 earthquake and a tsunami so powerful it claimed over hundreds of thousands of lives in a matter of hours. And that may have only been the beginning. What if an even larger rupture is coming? One that could eclipse that catastrophe in scale and devastation. Stretching more than 5,000 kilometers along the seafloor, the Sunda Megathrust is far from finished releasing its fury. With vast segments still locked, storing strain for centuries, scientists warn that another megaquake is not a question of if, but when. Today, let's delve into the Sunda Megathrust, uncovering the seismic forces at play, the history etched in tectonic scars, and the future risks that threaten the lives of millions. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. The Sunda Megathrust is a massive subduction zone located along the convergent boundary where the Indo-Australian Plate dives beneath the Eurasian Plate. This boundary stretches from the northern Andaman Islands in the Bay of Bengal, down along the west coast of Sumatra and Java, and continues further southeast toward the Lesser Sunda Islands. It spans more than 5,500 kilometers in length, making it one of the longest active subduction zones in the world. The tectonic mechanism at play involves the heavier oceanic lithosphere of the Indo-Australian plate, being forced beneath the lighter continental lithosphere of Southeast Asia. As these plates converge at a rate of roughly 50 to 70 millimeters per year, immense geological stress accumulates along the fault interface. Over centuries, this stress builds up until it is suddenly released in the form of an earthquake. The rupture of the fault during such an event can displace the seafloor dramatically, often triggering tsunamis capable of traveling across oceans at jetliner speeds. Unlike strike-slip faults like California's San Andreas faults, which primarily involve horizontal movement, the Sunda Megathrust features vertical displacement one plate thrusts under another. This characteristic makes it particularly dangerous, as vertical motion of the seafloor during subduction earthquakes is what often generates devastating tsunamis. One cannot discuss the Sunda Megathrust without acknowledging the catastrophic 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami. On December 26, 2004, a section of the megathrust off the coast of northern Sumatra ruptured in a magnitude 9.1 to 9.3 earthquake. It was one of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded, releasing energy equivalent to approximately 550 million times that of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The rupture extended over 1,300 kilometers and caused the seafloor to shift by as much as 20 meters in some locations. The resulting tsunami reached speeds of up to 800 kilometers per hour and struck coastal communities around the Indian Ocean with little or no warning. Indonesia, Sri Lanka, India, and Thailand were among the hardest hit countries. In total, more than 230,000 people were killed, making it one of the deadliest natural disasters in human history. The 2004 event shocked both the scientific community and the global public. Although the Sunda megathrust was known to be an active fault, few had anticipated an earthquake of such scale. It also exposed the lack of preparedness and warning systems in many Indian Ocean nations. In the aftermath, there was a significant push to improve seismic monitoring and tsunami detection capabilities across the region. However, even in the wake of such devastation, Geologists quickly realized that the 2004 rupture was only a portion of the Sunda megathrust. Large segments of the fault, particularly those off the coasts of central and southern Sumatra and western Java, had not ruptured in centuries, and they remain locked today, storing immense tectonic stress. 
Despite the horror of 2004, scientists believe the Sunda megathrust is still capable of producing another massive earthquake, perhaps even larger than the last. Paleoseismic studies have identified several segments along the fault that have not ruptured in historical times. For example, the Mentawai segment, located just off the west coast of Sumatra, near Padang, is believed to have last ruptured in the 18th century. Since then, the Indo-Australian plate has continued to push against the Sunda plate without significant release, leading researchers to conclude that the fault is locked and storing energy for a future event. Modeling studies suggest that the Mentawai segment alone could produce an earthquake in the magnitude 8.5 to 9.0 range. If other segments were to rupture in a cascading sequence, as occurred in 2004, the resulting quake could exceed magnitude 9.0. The consequences of such an event would be severe. Cities like Padang, which sits precariously close to the fault, could face tsunami inundation within 30 minutes of the quake, offering little time for evacuation. Further south, the segments of the Sunda Megathrust that lie beneath Java and Bali are also of great concern. Although these regions have not experienced megaquakes in recorded history, recent seismic tomography and GPS data indicate these areas may also be accumulating stress. The presence of thick sediment layers in some parts of the Java Trench may mask smaller seismic events and complicate efforts to assess risk. However, the sheer length and complexity of the megathrust suggests that no section is immune to eventual rupture. Adding to the urgency is the high population density along Indonesia's western coastlines. Cities like Jakarta, Bandung, and Surabaya are home to millions of people, many of whom live in structures not designed to withstand large earthquakes or tsunamis. A megaquake striking these areas would almost certainly lead to catastrophic loss of life. Beyond the immediate physical destruction, a megaquake along the Sunda megathrust would have profound socioeconomic and geopolitical implications. Indonesia is Southeast Asia's largest economy and a key player in regional trade. A major earthquake striking Java or Sumatra could cripple transportation infrastructure, disrupt supply chains, and trigger large-scale displacement of people. In addition, the risk of cascading disasters is very real. Earthquakes in coastal regions may trigger landslides, dam failures, or secondary fires. Tsunamis may breach industrial facilities, leading to chemical spills or nuclear incidents, as was seen during Japan's 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. The humanitarian response to such a disaster would require international coordination on a massive scale. Insurance and financial markets would also be affected. A megaquake in Indonesia could lead to massive claims, destabilize regional economies, and drive up global insurance premiums. In an interconnected world, the ripple effects of a single tectonic event can travel far beyond the epicenter. In response to the risks posed by the Sunda megathrust, Indonesia and its regional partners have invested heavily in earthquake monitoring and tsunami early warning systems. The Indonesian Agency for Meteorology, Climatology, and Geophysics operates a network of seismic stations, tide gauges, and GPS sensors to monitor tectonic activity in real time. These data are fed into models that aim to detect tsunami-genic earthquakes and issue public warnings. The Indian Ocean Tsunami Warning System established after 2004, represents a major step forward in regional disaster preparedness. However, even the best warning systems face limitations. For communities located close to the rupture zone, such as those in western Sumatra, the time between the initial quake and tsunami landfall may be less than 30 minutes, which is often insufficient for a full-scale evacuation. In such cases, Community education and preparedness drills are critical to saving lives. Scientists are also working to improve their understanding of the Sunda megathrust through offshore drilling, 
ocean bottom seismometer deployments, and satellite-based technology. These studies aim to refine estimates of slip potential, identify locked and creeping segments of the fault, and simulate worst-case earthquake and tsunami scenarios. Despite advances in technology, however, predicting the exact timing of a megaquake remains impossible. The Sunda megathrust is a sleeping giant. Silent, invisible, but immensely powerful. Its geological characteristics make it one of the most dangerous fault zones on the planet. While the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake was a wake-up call, the threat is far from over. Large sections of the megathrust remain locked and loaded, storing energy for future earthquakes that could rival or exceed past disasters. The challenge facing scientists, governments, and communities is twofold. To deepen our understanding of the fault's behavior and to prepare society for the inevitable. Advances in seismology and early warning systems offer hope, but they must be accompanied by robust infrastructure, public education, and international cooperation. Ultimately, the Sunda megathrust reminds us of our vulnerability in the face of nature's forces and the importance of resilience, foresight, and scientific inquiry in securing a safer future.